Hello, and welcome to the final video in the Calculus 2 series. So, in this final video for Calculus 2, we'll be talking about the idea of the unit tangent, the unit normal, and the binormal vectors in a 3D axis. We'll also be talking about the concept of a normal plane and an osculating plane as well. So, this is falling into the realms of almost, like, 3D calculus at this point, but this is still relevant in 2D calculus to some extent because we the idea of vectors and whatnot can be related to these kind of important definitions. Also, I should mention we already mentioned the idea of the unit tangent vector, but we're just going to be extending our understanding of this by combining these new definitions as well. So let's just write down all of these definitions just to be really clear. In fact, I'm actually going to draw this out just to have a more of a visualization as to what's going on here. So the unit tangent vector is going to be denoted by T. We already talked about this. That's going to be here. The normal, the unit normal, is going to be this axis right there. So that's going to be unit normal. The binormal vector is going to be orthogonal to both of these vectors. So it's going to be orthogonal here, and it's going to be orthogonal here. So what, are, what, does, what does this even mean? Well, let's go and write down the definitions. So let's see be a smooth curve. So once again, there's no jumps or gaps. We already defined what a smooth curve is. Given by R of T. Okay, so this means that the unit tangent vector, we talked about this already, it's gonna be R prime of T divided by the magnitude of R prime of T. Okay, so that's the unit tangent vector to be very clear. We already mentioned this. Okay, the next one is going to be the unit normal vector, so n of t. So this is going to equal to t prime of t, so we need to get the unit tangent vector in order to get this. This makes sense intuitively because, you know, the anything that's tangent and anything that's normal are always orthogonal to each other. So this kind of relationship kind of makes sense to some extent. So anyways, we get t prime of t divided by the magnitude of t prime of t. So this is known as the unit normal vector. Okay, and the last one is known as the binormal vector. So b of t. So that's going to be equal to, well, we have two, these two vectors are orthogonal to B. So as you can probably kind of imagine, we take the cross product of these vectors. So T of T cross N of T. So this is known as the binormal vector. So let me just write that down. Okay, so fair enough. So this isn't terribly hard to kind of think about. So these are just your definitions. So let's go into an example where we compute all of these things. So how does this you know, work? And then we'll talk about the idea of normal and oscillating planes as well. So let's go ahead and do an example of this, this thing right there. So example. So find the unit tangent vector the unit normal vector and the binormal vector at the following point. So it's going to be 1, 2 over 3, and 1, where R of t is t squared, 2 over 3 times t cubed, and t. Okay, well, once again, if you kind of compare the coordinates with each other, we can see that clearly from the last coordinate, t equals 1. And that's because, by definition, we can see that z equals t, which means that t equals 1 by definition. So there's nothing particularly surprising about that. You get the same conclusion if you use the other coordinates as well. So that's, that's fine. So either way, we need to compute the derivative of this thing. Luckily, we only need the first derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. So r prime of t is equal to 2t, 2 times 3 over 3, so that's going to be equal to 2t squared. 
and then 1, that's going to be the r prime of t. And then let's compute r prime of 1, because that's the t value that corresponds to this vector equation. That's going to be 2, 2, and 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and compute the magnitude of this vector, because we need that right there. So let's go ahead and compute the magnitude. Again, this isn't terribly hard. So 2 squared plus 2 squared, that's 4, 4 plus 4. That's going to be, let's see, 5 and then, and then 1. Yeah, okay. Um, we should probably do this in general, though, because we need our, the magnitude of r prime of t. Although we could evaluate this and then do it all, but it's better to do it in general, just because we're going to be using it in the second part anyway. So as a result, let's compute r prime of t as a result and do it that way. Because we're going to be needing r prime of t, we're going to be needing t prime of t, prime of t anyway for the second equation. So it's better just to do it in general and then use it for the rest of the questions. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you go ahead and do this, we'll get the magnitude of 2p squared. So it's going to be 4t squared plus, let's see, it's going to be 4t to the 4 plus 1 squared. So it's going to be 1. And then we can simplify this a little bit. So if you simplify this, we'll get 4t to the 4 plus 4t squared plus 1. So we get the square root of, let's see, we can factor that. So if we go and factor that, we'll get 2t squared plus 1 all squared. So that's going to be 2t squared plus 1. So now we can compute the magnitude. So r prime of 1, if you go to compute this, we'll get the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. That's going to be equal to 3. So because that's 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, 1 plus 8 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. Okay, we'll need this eventually, so might as well just compute it right now. So let's go ahead and do the rest of this. So the unit tangent vector, by definition, is going to be equal to r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t, so that thing. So let's just write that down, actually. Okay, so if you go and do that, we'll get r prime of t. Well, by definition, we know that what that is. So that's going to be equal to 2t, 2t squared, and 1. And then we would divide each of these things by r prime of t, making 2, which is this thing. Okay, well, we can go ahead and do that. So if we just kind of write this down, we'll get, let's see. Hmm, let's be a little bit clearer about this. So we get 2t divided by 2t squared plus 1, 2t squared divide by 2t squared plus 1, did 1 over 2t squared plus 1, and that's going to be the unit tangent vector. And then we can compute this thing at 1. So the unit tangent vector at 1, if you go ahead and do this out, you will get 2 over 3, 2 over 3, 1 over 3. And that's going to be the unit tangent vector. Okay. We will eventually need that, so let's just go ahead and keep it to the side for now. We will now need the derivative of t prior t of t, because we'll need it to find a normal vector. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take the derivative of this. If you go ahead and take the derivative of this, which you can do using the quotient rule, so I'll skip the work for it, you'll get 2 minus 4t squared divided by 2t squared plus 1 all squared. 4t divided by 2t squared plus 1 all squared and minus 4t divided by 2t squared plus 1 all squared and that's going to be our unit tangent vector derivative. Okay, so now we're going to take the magnitude of this vector. If you go ahead and do this out, well, we'll get the following. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy-paste this portion of the 
unit tangent vector there. Okay, so squared, squared, and then finally plus this thing squared. Okay, well, the denominators are all going to be squared by the exact same amount, so we can actually factor this out from the denominator. A 2 can also be factored out because that's common to all three of these terms. So, as a result, we can get the following situation. So, we get 2, which is going to be squared, so that's going to be a 4. But then the square root of 4 is 2, so we can factor all of these out. So, we get 2 over 2t two squared plus 1 all squared. So but just to be very clear, we square this number when we factor it out, and we take the square root of it, so it's just, become, it's just going to become squared again. And then on the inside, we're going to have, let's see, 1 minus 2t squared, all squared, plus 2t, all squared, plus minus 2t, all squared. Okay. If we clean this up a little bit and expand everything, we'll get the following. So we'll get 2 over 2t two squared plus 1, all squared, square root of 4t to the 4 plus 4t squared plus 1. Okay, this can be factored. So if you go ahead and factor this, you'll get 2 over 2t two squared plus 1, all squared, square root of 2t squared plus 1, all squared. But then, as a result, we get that these two cancel. And then this cancels with one of these. So overall, we're left with 2 over 2t two squared plus 1. So finally, after a lot of effort, we get the normal vector. So the normal vector is going to be equal to, or if you, if you remember, it's going to be t prime of t divided by the magnitude of t prime of t. And then if you go ahead and do this out, well we know what the first one is. That's this thing right there. And then we divide this by the magnitude of this vector. So let me just make a line. And then we need to divide it by this thing right there. Okay, so if you flip this over and multiply everything through, you'll get the following vector. You'll get 1 minus 2t squared divided by 2t squared plus 1, 2t divided by 2t squared plus 1, and then comma, minus 2t, because the 2s will cancel in one of these things, and it'll happen, it happens here as well. Anyways, you would divide this by 2t squared plus 1. And that will be our normal vector. So we can now compute this at 1. So n of 1, that's going to equal to minus 1 over 3, 2 over 3, and minus 2 over 3. So that will be our normal vector. So that means we can also compute the binormal vector. So the binormal vector at 1 is going to be equal to the unit tangent vector at 1 crossed with the normal vector at 1. If you, the, if you do the cross product of this thing, you'll get minus 2 over 3, 1 over 3, and 2 over 3. So that right there is going to be the, the value for the binormal vector at this particular instant. Very nice. All right, now the final topic in this is we're going to talk about the idea of normal and osculating planes. So let's go ahead and draw a 3D axis. So here's the binormal vector, here's the unit tangent vector, and here is the normal vector. And let's draw a circle. And when I say a circle, I don't mean quite literally a circle, I'm just going to draw half the circle. So it's just, just going to look something like that, for example. Okay, so I'm going to use a different color for this part. So this green portion I'm going to draw right there. So this green portion is known as the osculating plane. Uh, 
Okay, and then this blue portion I'm gonna draw right here. So this blue portion right there, that is known as the normal plane. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw some arrows there, just to be very clear. Okay, notice that, okay, and I'm gonna call this curve right there C. So notice that this curve C is, I drew it as a circle, the radius of the circle, so the radius, which I'm gonna call rho of C, is equal to one over kappa. So it's one over the curvature. Just to be very clear, this is the radius of this oscillating circle. So let me just kind of specify that. So radius of osculating circle. Okay. So how do you find the equations of the osculating plane and the normal plane? Remember, to find the equation of plane, we need a point on a plane and we need a normal. So here's one thing we notice. Let me just go ahead and use a different color to do this part. We see that a normal to this plane is spanned by B and N. So let me just actually specify that. So a normal to the normal plane is given by B and N. Okay, well, there's one other thing we can also look at, and that is the green portion, so the oscillating plane. So a normal given by that plane is the following. So let me just draw a normal. So this normal right there, So this normal right there, so normal to osculating plane is given by the following. So this the normal to this osculating plane is given by T and then. So let's kind of define this a little bit more. Just to be very clear as to what's going on. So the normal to the normal plane is given by B and N. So remember that this kind of condition right there, this portion is represented by the unit tangent vector, in other words. So as a result, this is also given by R prime. And this part right there, this is given by R prime cross our double prime because that's kind of what we wrote up here if you recall so if you kind of go back up here a little bit so in the previous video if you go back up a little bit that's what we wrote there for tangent planes so that's kind of the reason we define it by r prime and cross r double prime so let me just kind of specify what I just said there, just to be very clear. So the normal can also be defined by this. So the normal to osculating plane is defined by the following. So another way to describe a normal is R prime cross R double prime. And then a normal to the normal plane can be defined by the following. So in this case, the normal can be defined by, so given by R prime. Okay. So this might seem a bit confusing, but essentially what I'm saying is that we can get a normal to both of these planes by considering R prime and R double prime. And for in the case of the normal to the oscillating plane, we can just take the cross product of them because, well, we can see that the cross product will give us a, a normal that we need. 
So let's do an example of actually computing the normal and the oscillating plane of a particular curve or described by curve. So let's do an example of this. So find an equation for the normal plane and osculating plane of the curve with x equals 2 sine of 3t, y equals t, and z equals 2 cosine of 3t. And the point is at 0 pi and minus 2. OK, so once again, we can look at the second coordinate. So y equals t implies that t equals pi. If you just kind of compare this coordinate with this coordinate, we can see that t equals pi. So therefore, t equals pi. So there's nothing special about this. So this is good. So let's go ahead and compute a few derivatives because you're, you're going to need the first two derivatives as a result. So let's take a look here. So we're going to need r prime and r double prime, and we're going to need r prime for the normal plane. Okay, so let's compute the derivatives. So r of t is going to be, well, vectorially, it's going to be written as 2 sine of 3t t and 2 cosine of 3t. Okay, let's go ahead and take the derivative. So that's going to be 6 cosine of 3t, 1, and minus 6 sine of 3t. And then finally, we get our double prime of t. So that's going to be equal to, actually, we don't need our double prime to be honest, so we can just leave it at that. And then if you go ahead and evaluate these points, well, let's take a look. So r prime of t, or not t, pi, because that's the particular t value, that's going to give us minus 6, 1, and 0. So if you go back up a little bit, that's going to be the normal to the normal plane. Okay, so that's that's useful to know. So that means that the equation of our normal plane is going to be given by the following. So it's going to be minus 6 times x minus 0 plus 1 times y minus pi plus 0 times z plus 2. Just to be very clear, those are the points that I'm working with because I was given the question. So if you go and expand this, we'll get minus 6x plus y minus pi is equal to 0. Okay, so we now need the second derivative, so r double prime of t. So that's going to be equal to minus 18 sine of t, 0, minus 18 cosine of 3t. Okay, and then we need the second derivative at pi. So that's 0, 0, and 18. Okay, so the normal to this plane is going to be i, j, k, minus 6, 1, 0, and then 0, 0, and 18. If you go ahead and compute this, you'll get 18, 108, and 0. And then since a normal it can be scalar multiples of something, we can take the 18 out, which is common to this. So we get 18, 1, 6, and 0. So this right there is also a normal. So, therefore, a normal to this equation is 1, 6, and 0. So that's fine. So, therefore, an equation for this plane is 1 times x minus 0 plus 6 times y minus pi plus 0 times z plus 2 is equal to 0 which means that if we clean this up a little bit, we get 6x plus 6y minus 6 times pi, or, yeah, 6 times pi, is equal to 0. 
and that right there is the equation for our oscillating plane. So just very clear, this is the oscillating plane. And up here, this was the normal plane. And that is it for this video. And not only is it that is it for this video and this concept, but that is also it for the Capitalist 2 videos. So thank you all so much for watching all these videos. And if you if, this, if these videos were of any help, please share these videos with your people of friends. Share this video with anybody you know, this playlist. Uh, as, a, as a channel who just started about a year ago, it's been a great pleasure knowing, to, to getting to know all my subscribers and all my commenters who have been, who have been this entire time, and I appreciate it all so much. So, as always, if this video helped you, or if this entire video series helped you in any way, please let me know. Please let your friends know, your, your classmates, anybody that you know. Please subscribe, please share this, please like and comment. And I'll really appreciate it. Thank you all so much and have a great day, everybody. I'll be uploading a final exam review as well, which will cover the basics of a standard calculus two final exam. And it'll be that. So see you all around in the next and final video that I upload. Have a great day.